What up, this is Patrick Hayes, welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video, what I wanna talk about is the fifth dimension. What is the fifth dimension? What is 5D? You may have heard this term. It's used a lot in the new age communities, especially in the ET communities. But there's not really a very good description that is anywhere that's very easy to find about what 5D actually is. And the interesting thing about it is that the term 5D used to be called something different in ancient texts um, and ancient mystical traditions. It was never called the fifth dimension, um, but people are calling, that, calling it that now. And I think there's a lot of confusion regarding what it actually is. See, I've asked different people, quite a few, what the fifth dimension is to them, because I'll hear them using this term 5D. And oftentimes I don't get really a, a clear answer whatsoever. About as vivid as, vivid as it is, for them is that, well, it's this other dimensional plane that's of a higher vibration. And some people will say that, you know, and then you ascend to it and you leave the, the 3D world as we experience. Other people will say, well, you can exist in both realms. Um, but that's about as far as their description gets. And so what I want to do is I want to clarify things so that we have a clear understanding of what it is and this idea of ascending to the fifth dimension, what that actually means so that we can be accurate with our interpretations and then actually use the term appropriately and then actually use the benefits of that understanding for our own personal development. So, to make it really simple, I'll just start off with dimensions in general. So, we have three dimensions of space, right? So, up, down, left, right, front, back. The fourth dimension is time. This aligns with physics too, those four at least. The fifth dimension then is what people would traditionally call the astral realm, right? Or darkness visible. And this is a realm that is essentially um, where astral bodies exist. And if you die, your astral body can live on and it would then perpetuate within the astral realm. There are beings that exist within the astral realm that don't exist within the physical realm. And the astral realm is um, the fifth dimension and it is a quasi-physical realm. So while we have the physical dimension where things are physical, we have physical experiences, we can touch and feel and you know have all that go on, we can have very similar experiences in the astral realm also as we all know from dreams that we've had. But it's more slippery and more malleable because that realm is quasi-physical and the, the laws, you could say like the physics of that realm are different than they are in the physical realm. And so as a result, there's all sorts of different, really cool, interesting things that we can do. And a lot of the ideas of what, uh, what is really exciting to somebody that's on a spiritual path, the ability to you know, dematerialize matter or walk through a wall or fly or all these different things are much easier to achieve in the astral realm or the fifth dimension than they are in the physical realm. Because in the physical realm, there's extreme amounts of, um, of kundalini that would be, need to be uh, manifested in order to do some of these really, really powerful things. Where in the astral realm, um, it doesn't require that kind of an activation. Um, it's the, the laws there are, um, are, like I said, more slippery and it's easier to do certain things. But the process of, you could say ascending, when they use this term, ascending to the fifth dimension, is the process of the individual becoming conscious and stabilizing their consciousness across dimensions into the astral realm. So this process very much is the process of learning how to uh, astral project, learning how to lucid dream, and learning how to, which is learning how to stabilize your consciousness so that you have a, a, a enough awareness, you've magnetized enough consciousness in your awareness to be able to hold, stable in a realm that's much less dense. See, in the physical realm, um, we have this very dense container to contain our consciousness. And so then we're able to contain linearity and make sense of things and remember things in a very particularly organized way in the physical realm because we're supported by the physical dimension and the density that gives us this container to contain our consciousness in a brain that remembers things, right? But when we're in the astral realm, it's so much lighter, there's so much less density that in order to stabilize your consciousness in that realm, 
and have memory and be able to think back to your waking life while you're in the astral realm, but then also be able to take your waking life consciousness into the astral realm. This requires a concentration of, you could say, uh, like consciousness energy, like a densification of consciousness in a sense, to densify into a stable structure that exists within the, um, the astral realm or the fifth dimension. And this is the process of becoming 5D. This is also the process of becoming immortal. So when you, like if you look into Dan Winter's work or you look into ancient Egyptian lore, all, all different mystical traditions, there's, all this, there's always this idea of building um, structures in your energy body. So subtle body building, which is a really, really important part of evolution because as we develop different characteristics that may be demonstrated as certain strengths in the physical world, we're also developing structures in our energy field. And these structures, when they stabilize, become stable in the astral realm and then become things that we take with us after we die. So very much you could think of one of the main purposes of life, or if not the purpose of life, is to stabilize um, divine structures within our astral body so that we can take those with us after death because that's really the only thing we take. We don't take any of our, you know, the stuff that any of the money, we all know this. We don't take money. We don't take all of the physical things that we accumulate in our life with us after we die. What we take is who we become and what is stabilized in our astral field through the different trials that we go through in our life, through the different habits that we build, through the different thought patterns that we create, the will forces that we create, the, um, the heart forces that we create. All of these things can stabilize into divine geometries in our astral body, and then we can take this with us after death. And so when they talk about ascending to the fifth dimension, essentially that is becoming conscious in the fifth dimension. And what this can be experienced as, as we walk around in our everyday life, is that we would experience the physical realm, but we also have access to darkness visible or five, the fifth dimension, 5D, or the astral realm. And we can consciously be in both realms at once. Because while both of these realms are distinctly separate realms, they're very much intertwined with each other. For example, uh, somebody that has a physical body also has an astral body. And so if you exist in, if you're conscious in the fifth dimension, then you can see with your mind's eye, your third eye, you can see their astral body and what's going on with their astral body or even their etheric body while you are looking at them physically too. And so a really good healer might have the capacity to see into darkness visible or 5D to be able to read what's going on in their energetic structure and then be able to heal them by using different astral forces or different techniques to heal the person. So this is the capacity of somebody that has fifth dimensional access. You could also think of it in the terms of a psychic. A psychic that can get different psychic visions or travel to different astral dimensions and get different downloads or figure different things out or somebody that can astral project obviously has access to the fifth dimension. And so this process of becoming 5D is not a process of leaving the third dimension. It can be because if people, if you die and you lose your physical body, then a certain portion of your consciousness does carry over into the fifth dimension. So in that sense, um, some people leave 3D and you could say move to 5D through death, but it's not something that you, um, you need to leave the third dimension in order to get the fifth dimension. In fact, a most a really advanced being here in the 3D realm is a being that exists in both realms at once and is able to navigate both realms at once. And while it's true that the process of stabilizing yourself in the fifth dimension is a process of raising your vibration in particular ways in order to stabilize your consciousness there, a fifth dimensional being doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily say a uh, service to others being or a benevolent being. You can still be fifth dimensional and you can be uh, what people would consider evil. You could also be fifth dimensional and you could be what people consider like loving or good. So there's another common misconception that people have is that if somebody is 5D, that they are a divine being or that they are um, a loving being. And that's not necessarily true. So the thing to realize is that 
you can move into a lot higher vibrations while still being, say, like evil. And this is what a dark sorcerer is. Dark sorcerer has learned how to stabilize really high frequencies, um, but doing it in a service to self kind of way that's manipulative, which is something that was really difficult for me to kind of take in at first. I didn't understand. But uh, the truth of the matter is, is that there's still a lot of um, bandwidth available for moving into a higher frequency, but still doing it in a way that um, from the grand perspective is not actually in service to others, but could even be manipulative. So in the fifth dimension, there are what you could call like dark overlords. And these are different beings that may be doing different things like feeding off the energy of humans that are less conscious in the physical realm and are not aware of their astral body. And therefore, as they walk around the physical realm, their astral body is being manipulated by different beings that are influencing them to do different things in order to generate some sort of um, like release of energy that they can harvest off of. Um, there's other beings that have stabilized certain dimensions within the fifth dimensional realm, certain um, kind of self-existing uh, fields or realms that have a certain level of uh, feeling real. And they can be spaces where people get caught inside their dreams when they're dreaming, um, where they can harvest energy from people, or they can even be realms that people go to after death. So the astral realm is very, very vast and there's many different levels of it. And, um, and that's a whole study in itself, all the different levels. But there's kind of an underworld level, and you could break it into these you know, different sections. There's kind of like an underworld, and then there's like a higher astral realm. And then there's you know, this, this spiritual spheres of highness that are you know, these really, really divine realms where the gods live. So there are beings that, that in a sense have kind of tried to take this title as God and that exist in a lower level of the fifth dimension and they manipulate people. But there's also many, many different benevolent beings, positive beings and guides and supports that exist in that realm that are here to serve us also. And the only reason why I mention that stuff about um, the, the manipulative beings is to give a little bit of context for what might be going on with certain people in the realm. So what I mean is that if you don't develop your awareness in those realms, you might get taken advantage of by different beings. And very much this can look like, um, say, like an undefined structure in that realm. You could say, you could imagine it to be something more like, like, a, like an undefined orb that is kind of cloudy and murky that then is being manipulated by other beings to cause a person to act in a certain way. Whereas somebody that becomes conscious in that realm will stabilize different divine geometries in that realm and you can imagine it to look more like, uh, a, um, like, like a conscious sentient being that is traveling through that realm with the capacity to morph oftentimes into many different uh, expressions of itself. So um, developing yourself by doing different spiritual practices in order to develop your subtle body structures is extremely important for becoming 5D or moving into the fifth dimension. Because if we don't do this, then essentially we don't have enough consciousness in that realm to actually be conscious. So being 5D is actually becoming conscious in this realm so that we can navigate in several realms at once. And many different practices can be done to help do this. Practices to open the third eye, practices to open any of the super sensible perceptions that we have in any of the chakras or in any of the astral points. So it's be like the third eye, the heart and the will center and developing these forces to a sufficient degree that, that they act like sense organs in this higher realm, right? So you can imagine it's like we have our eyes, we have our ears, and we have you know, the sense of touch. We have all these different things where we're able to navigate the physical world and that tells us what's going on in this world, right? But we have to work in order to develop these kinds of sense perceptions in the astral realm. And the process of developing it very much is different meditative practices that move energy through our astral field in certain directions that start to build structures in our energy field and start to attract beings that are there to help us, right? So if we're perpetuating a lot of negative behavior, we start attracting beings that might stabilize structures in our field that, that keep us unconscious and help them to serve their purpose. Whereas 
if we are doing it from a heart space kind of uh, beautiful service to other kind of mentality and intention, we can get into beautiful spaces that start structuring our energy fields with beings that are there to serve us and help us to become the greatest version of ourselves. And then as we do that, we can start stabilizing our consciousness with the ability to see in darkness visible, to feel in darkness visible, to move in darkness visible, or the fifth dimension. And with that capacity, then we become multidimensional beings in a whole different way. And then we also stabilize our consciousness into a higher dimension that we can, um, that we live in after we die. So we become immortal. And Dan gets really into the physics of this. Dan Winter is a friend of mine. And his physics is really amazing as far as bringing the scientific side of aura building and how that helps you retain memory after death so that when you die, you don't kind of dissolve because your structures haven't been built enough for you to stabilize your consciousness and bring your memory through. So very much the process of life is the opportunity for us to build structures in our astral field in a, in a way that we wouldn't be able to build them um, any other way, right? So being in the physical world give us in, in this density and this limitation gives us the capacity to build structures that we wouldn't be able to build otherwise. And so very much this is an opportunity for us being in the physical realm to develop ourselves to an extremely, uh, in, in an extremely fast way to stabilize consciousness in this other realm. And then we take that consciousness that we stabilize with us. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe. If this video was useful to you, if you found that it gave you a better understanding of this idea of 5D and you know anybody else that would enjoy getting a description like this, please send this video to them. I would really appreciate it. To keep you posted, I am going to be releasing a online course here. I know I've been saying this for a while, um, sometimes within the next six months or so, and I'm gonna go really deep into this process and into the process of subtle energy uh, body building so we can get deeper into this. So if you're interested in that, sign up for my email list. And if you do that, there's a link down below. It's to the three keys of happiness. So you sign up for my email list by, by, uh, by downloading that video. And if you get connected, then I'll keep you posted on the online course that I'm gonna be doing with live calls and you can get in there and reserve your spot. So thanks so much for tuning in and I will talk to you next time. One love.